E360 TV proudly presents Messages of Inspirational Stories TV show. Live streaming now to millions of devices around the world on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, YouTube Live, Facebook Live Streaming. Our shows are available video on demand on these channels. And we broadcast daily Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on these channels. On Mondays, Expanding Your Business. Tuesdays, Finding Health Naturally. Wednesdays, Mentoring Our Youth. Thursdays, Pets We Love. And on Fridays, Women in Leadership. Brought to you by our producers and hosts, Jim Grant and Donna Guinwa. Along with our host, Bieta Severin Reed and Emerson Brantley. Supported by our admin team of Michaela Vidal and Gaia Guinwa Balcone Weda. And welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspirational Stories is proudly brought to you by the good guys at the 6 minutewebinarcom and our good friend, Mr. Bill Heinrich, the seven levels of truth, because if you're struggling in your life and you're just, you know, trying to figure out what's it all about, you know, <laughs> which direction should can I go or should I go? I highly recommend this book here. Because this book here took 30 years in the making uh, for Bill to do it. And Bill is uh, a gentleman that uh, he wanted to find himself. He's got skin in the game. And that's the kind of people we like to align ourselves with. Because in Bill's book, he teaches you how to quit focusing on the physical things. Set your sights higher because you're entitled to be loved. And you have every right to love yourself. It's your birthright. And you also have the birthright to be able to enjoy the, the abundance of the universe. The abundance of love, peace, harmony in your life. And, and Bill, I, he, he honored me by wanting me to put my comments in here. And I said, Bill Heinrich is a master at showing you how to eliminate the negative distractions that rob you of your energy and your life. That was my issue, and that's exactly what he helped solve for me. So if you've been there and you got a lot of negative <laughs> distractions that pop up, can rob you of your, your life and all that, you know, as far as time, you know, and consume you, uh, this book really did help me, folks, and I endorse it 100%. And it says, if you want to love your life and have total clarity and find your true purpose in life. I highly recommend this book. And my name is on it, Jim Grant. And I highly recommend that book. And I can say this about Bill. If you uh, if you buy the book and you're not happy with it or whatever, I guarantee you he will be more than happy to refund your money. Again, the book is The Seven Levels of Truth. You can find it on uh, Amazon. The price on the book is $17.95. Let me hold that up there. I guess sometimes the camera will reverse that. And but $17.95. And plus the fact with Mr. Bill, um, let me uh, put his website up here. He will give you a complimentary 30-minute consultation on what is, you know, blocking you so to speak. Just go to truelifepurposenow.com. That's truelifepurposenow.com. You can see it on the marquee there, ladies and gentlemen. And just say, I like to, I like to have a 30-minute complimentary conversation with you. I'm going to go into a little more detail because I'm, <laughs> Rennie's been, uh, he's had some trouble uh, with the uh, with the, he was here and we've lost him. So he's going to be back in, but sincerely, I want to take some time here and share some things with you. Bill Heinrich, he encouraged me without me knowing I needed to do it. He encouraged me just by asking questions. And the way that happened, this is why that 30 minute consultation and a conversation with Bill is so important to you. We were uh, down 
down in Tampa. Uh, we were in Largo, Florida. And uh, I got a call. I think I know who this is from. Let's see here. This is Rennie. Hang on a second, folks. Hi, Rennie. Hi, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Just when you started to say, uh, and my good friends at the six minute webinar, uh -huh. all of a sudden your screen went blank on my end. Okay. Uh... Okay. Okay. Let me go ahead and send you the link again on an email, and because uh, I'm I'm recording now, and uh, you can pop in here and we can go from there. And uh, oh yeah, uh, this is the it'd be the same link, but it'd just be a a new one from. Uh, and that's the beauty in technology, ladies and gentlemen. When it works, it works great. When it doesn't work, you go like, holy enchiladas, Batman, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm just going to do a, a copy and paste and send it right to you right now. And hopefully, uh, CWDF, uh, let's see if he gets it. And if not, we will carry on and, and we'll just continue to march. And oh, yeah. I am too. So just go ahead and come on in when you can. I'll keep talking. We'll go from there, brother. Okay. Okay. If you're not connected to the internet, that would be a disconnect. So go down to the run down, ladies and gentlemen. Rennie's gonna run down to the ATM and get a couple of quarters, and he'll be right back. <laughs> okay. We'll catch you in a few, brother. Yeah, bye bye. And that's one of the things about whenever, you know, in life, when things like right now, we're live on TV, right? And things happen. And the lesson in that, and I'm going to get back to what I was saying about Bill. Uh, the lesson in that is don't let the little physical things that you have no control over upset you. I used to fall prey to that. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but see, the courage and the wonderful thing about being honest and admitting your faults, your shortcomings, and in my case, maybe a little borderline ignorance, but that that sets you free. You're no longer a slave to it because if you never admit it and you try to hide it, it owns you. Think about that. Anyway, getting back to what I was going to say about Bill, we were in Largo, Florida, <laughs> and I had just knew Bill kind of casually, you might say. And uh, anyway, uh, we were all on break. We went to this big break room they had there with tables and chairs, you know. And I went over and got a cup of coffee. And I just thought, well, I'll just, you know, sit down. Hi, Bill. How you doing? And start talking to you a little bit. And we started talking. Bill has this very unique, powerful gift. When he looks at you, it's like reading you. And he says, Jim, what do you do? Well, I told him what I did. No, what do you really do? What do you mean? And this is before I had a TV show. This is several many years ago, as a matter of fact. And uh, he, he picked up on something in me because this can happen at any age. Sometimes people can pick up on a certain gift or trait or value that you have inside that you don't really, I wouldn't say you didn't know you didn't have it, but it's not prevalent in your mind. And Bill told, by asking questions, and that's what Bill does. He doesn't tell you anything. He asks questions and draws information out of you. That's the beauty. And that encouraged me because I realized I needed to create a course called Your Future Is Now. And one of the lessons that I teach in that course, one of the sections of it, I should say, is the LLAR system. The first L, L is in Lima, L is in Lima, A is in Alpha, and R is in Romeo. The first L stands for love. Everybody wants to be loved. There's no question about that. We can't live without love. I don't care how tough you are or how bulletproof you think you are. Bottom line is you need love. We all need love. And I'm not talking about, well, I'm not talking about love, love. I'm talking about the agape type of love that never fades, the true love. 
And that's the love I'm talking about. Yes, the other love, yeah, that's, uh, that puts the icing on the cake of life, but we're, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the agape type of love, the love that loves you through thick and thin, the stickability type of love. That's what we're talking about. And the second L is that everybody wants to be liked. Everybody deep down inside wants to be liked. And you have the right to be loved and you have the right to be liked. The A stands for appreciated. Everyone wants to be appreciated for who they are. And the R stands for respect. And everybody wants to be respected. And so Bill, uh, by, by him just asking me questions, I created that course and uh, so I've done enough filler time there. I think Rennie's back from the ATM. He's got a pot. He said, oh, I see he's got a pocket full of quarters, so we're ready to rock and roll. And ladies and gentlemen, today, Rennie is going to take us down a trip on how to evaluate. And let me just turn it over to him, because if I add any more verbiage to it, I'll goof it up. I have a unique ability to do that first time. So here's Rennie. Hey, Rennie, welcome to the show, buddy. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I don't know what the problem was because it said I was connected. And at mm -hmm. the same time, it said I'm not connected. So I don't know well, how it could be both. I can Maybe. relate to that because sometimes I think I'm connected. And my wife tells me I'm not connected, whatever <laughs> that means. <laughs> Okay. Well, she's probably right. Whatever oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. She's always yeah. right because if I'm wrong, she'll let me know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she sent me something recently. It was really cute. It said, in a marriage, there's always one person who's right and the other one is the husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the comedians. I got a kick out of them. So, so, you know, are you happy? I don't know. Let me ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got to have a little fun here, too. Exactly. So anyway, first, I want to thank you for sending me those three properties to evaluate. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about on this on the show today. And we're also going to talk about how you found them on LoopNet. Right. And what people will see on LoopNet. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Uh, are are we able to share the screen so that uh, people could see like only if I have slides, I can, I can put the oh, slides okay. up because right. let so me see if I, let me see if I can, uh, nope, this thing here because of the security thing that I've got on my computer, it's mm. very, very tight. It won't let me share, share the screen. We've tried that before okay. in a practice right. run. Fine. So, so I'll Sorry. just, I'll describe these things. Mm -hmm. And one of the properties that you sent to me, which was really quite lovely. All of them were really very nice looking properties mm -hmm. was a four unit that says oh. historic Holly house mm -hmm. uh, built in 1910 uh, rehabbed uh, forgot the date. Let's say about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And it says it's a four unit apartment. Mm -hmm. Well, but when you walk in the interior, it looks like a house. A mansion. Yeah. Yeah. A, a lovely mansion, not mm -hmm. an apartment building because you've got a table and plants in the interior as soon as you walk in the foyer. And, uh, you know, so I don't really see how this was mm -hmm. an apartment building mm -hmm. um, because all of the rooms are furnished. Maybe it's an Airbnb instead. Mm -hmm. And there are important things to look at on here from the standpoint of how mm -hmm. long it's been on the market. Okay. I've got the link up there where I found it, loopnet.com listing. And people, uh, during the live broadcast, you're not going to be able to catch it, but during, uh, you can play it again on YouTube or Facebook Live or wherever that you're watching it. And you can go to our YouTube channel or our website, my TV show, a live, dot live, and you can see it there. But anyway, you'll be able to freeze any of the uh, video here and look at those properties. So let me, uh, thank you for letting me putting that in there, brother. Oh, absolutely. So anyway, let me talk about that first one. So okay. I'm pulling it up on my computer. So I have all of the information mm -hmm. and it talks about a cap rate, which we talked about last mm -hmm. time, which is if you 
put the money in the bank and you earned 1%, that's the, the rate you're getting on your capital. If you mm-hmm. put it into this building, they're saying mm-hmm. that you're going to get 7.36% on the capital. Mm-hmm. So, that, you know, that, that makes it a lot nicer than the bank, but there mm-hmm. is work that could need to be done, you mm-hmm. know, to get that. So getting back to the uh, property, um, I'm going to click print. Let's see. I remember reading that it said something about when it was rehabbed. It's a 1910 house. Mm -hmm. uh, And it, oh, rehabbed in 1994. Renovate, so that's yeah. uh, like 27 years ago or, mm-hmm. you know, my, you know, I failed high school math. So let's see. Well, it's, it's going to be 30 years in uh, next year. So it's 20. Yeah, you're right. 29 years. All right. Yeah. Okay. So it was rehab 29 years ago. Anyway, it is beautiful. Mm. And the photos. Mm. Uh, oh, there we go. And the photos show you walk in the foyer, you've got a center table, you've got a plant on it. You've got um, Mm -hmm. like a den with a fireplace and it's fully furnished and Mm -hmm. it's just gorgeous like an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So I don't see how this is four units. It says there's three in the main house and one in a carriage house. Yeah. Now what, uh, let me get to. It's also in the National Register of Historic Places. Yes. And for you ladies out there, you would enjoy just clicking on that link and just looking at the interior pictures of an old house that's got charm and beauty. My goodness. Absolutely right. And now here's something else, because we're talking about buying a multi-unit property to lease out, rent out, uh, to have an income from it. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that older properties often need is repairs. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously the last time this was updated was 29 years ago. It was built 123 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's going to need repairs. Now here's the Mm -hmm. problem. I can't speak to what they do in Texas, but what I can do is speak to what they do in California. Mm -hmm. If you have a historic property in California or Los Angeles you don't get to make changes just because it's needed. You right, actually have to right. go through a whole process and mm-hmm. get permission to do what you want to do. I'm not talking about just getting a permit. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about getting permission to make any kind of change to a historic yeah. property where if you want to replace a window that broke, you may end up having to have a custom made window that would look like it was made 120 years ago yeah. to replace the one that broke. That's a good a good comment there, because as you were saying that, I was thinking, yeah, because if they approve the house because of everything in it being 1910, um, it's got to remain the same, which means you can't even change a toilet <laughs> with a modern toilet. Because that, it very wouldn't look the same. You know, you may have a pull chain clapper Mm -hmm. and you want to put in a low flow and it may be, sorry, (laughs) not allowed. It might be a a low flow, may be a no go. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Let's have some rhyming here. Yeah. Yeah, There we we could do a little um, uh, rapping. Uh, Okay. So there needs to be some of the things you need to find out, some of the things under the surface. Exactly. And that's what I like about having Rennie here because uh, I would have never thought about that. You know, if it needs a toilet, well, put in another toilet. Well, that might be a major issue down the road. Exactly. And uh, how often do they come in and inspect or how often do they make their rounds to make sure it still meets the historic guidelines? Because those things have guidelines. I know that. Yes. I don't know what they are, but I know they got standards. And uh, go ahead, Rennie. Yeah, no, and you're right. So the last thing in terms of this property is uh, they do have, the agent does have her name and contact information on here. Mm -hmm. I did call and it Mm -hmm. said, if you're interested in a property, please either send a text message about the property or send me an email. So Mm -hmm. she doesn't accept phone calls. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Now we're going to move on to the next property, which okay. is a 16 unit building. Mm -hmm. Well, let me rephrase that. It says 16 unit apartment building, but it's not one building. It is four buildings with mm -hmm. four units in each. Mm -hmm. And now when it describes the property, I'm, you know, it, it get, how do I phrase it? Let <laughs> Jim, are you still there? It looks like I might have lost my connection. I'm here. I see you. Okay. You're good. here. Yeah. All right, good. Um, let's say you wanted to sell a pig. Mm -hmm. Would you at least put some lipstick on that pig? And a dress, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a dress. You got yeah. it. You'd make yeah. it look nice. Well, take into consideration, regardless of how good or bad a property is, the mm -hmm. person who is listing it for sale will have wonderful things to say about it. How close mm -hmm. it's located to the airport and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or how close it is to Texas A&M engineering school or, you know, mm -hmm. it's a prime investment opportunity. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? Uh, this prime investment opportunity, as far as I could see, uh, was first listed last year in, uh, I think it was December. Mm -hmm. And here we are four months later, either this thing is still for sale, mm -hmm. or as I mentioned last time uh, regarding LoopNet, a broker may have sold the property, it's under contract and they leave it on LoopNet mm -hmm. to try and have more people as potential buyers for mm -hmm. the next listing that they might get. Mm -hmm. So, um, I uh, called uh, Renee mm -hmm. and uh, to get some more information about this property. Uh huh. And her voicemail is full. <laughs> so either she doesn't check her voice messages at all because I couldn't even leave a message, <laughs> or she's so busy and su so successful she doesn't care. Yeah. Okay. The next thing I noticed on all of these, and I don't know if that's indicative of uh, Texas, mm -hmm. but the annual taxes show $1. That was for all three properties. Now, I know property taxes are going to be more than a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did is I ended up calling on the third property. We're staying, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to continue talking about this second one. Mm -hmm. And I reached an agent there and he said, oh, yeah, you can find out what the property taxes are per county mm -hmm. by calling uh, by, excuse me, going on the Internet to BrazosCAD.org. That's yeah. B-R-A-Z as in D zebra, mm -hmm. O-S as in Sam, C-A-D.org. Yeah, that's that Brazos. Can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That way you can find out what the property tax percentage is mm -hmm. and what it says, you know, on a current mm -hmm. listing like this 16 unit property mm -hmm. that it's uh, the assessment is for eh, 1 million, we'll call it 1 million three. Mm -hmm. And it's being sold currently for 3 million two mm -hmm. or well over twice what the current assessment is. Mm -hmm. Now, there are probably games that you can play in Texas, but we're not going to talk about that. What we're going to mm -hmm. talk about is if you buy a building uh, for $3,250,000 and the taxes are about 2.5%, which is mm -hmm. a guess for the various areas in uh, Texas, mm -hmm. I will get out my calculator and put 3250000 oh, times 0 0.025 for two and a half percent. That means your property taxes are $81,250 per year mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. averaging $6,700 per month in property taxes alone. Yeah. So that obviously has to be mm -hmm. figured in to mm -hmm what your cash flow is going to be on this property. Mm -hmm. And the way most brokers work it is you call about the property. They don't give you the details that you need. What they'll do is say, 
uh, send me your email. I will send to you a non-disclosure agreement to sign, which means I'm providing this information about the property to you and you can't tell anyone else about it. Mm -hmm. I will send you the rent roll, what the actual rents are that's being received. I will send you the expense, let's say a trailing 24 month expense, uh, which is a great idea because the trailing 24 will give you a good idea on what any 12 month average expenses would be. Mm -hmm. So you don't get it on LoopNet. You actually have to call the broker and ask for those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And always check with the county for the uh, taxes on it. Cause the, uh, you put the address in there that, that will pull up the taxes. Cause that's, that's public information. Yes. And you're very close because I have, uh, eight and a half acres here and my home and all. And I forget what it's appraised at, but my property tax is about $4,300 on my home a year here in Texas. Even though Texas says we don't have any income tax. Well, that's good for the renters because <laughs> they don't have to pay any property tax. I do. And neither one of us have to pay income tax, but point being is that you got to check into what Rennie is saying there about the about the taxes because if you don't pay the taxes they can put a lien on the property <laughs> and that creates a that creates a whole new hit, set of headaches that you don't need so do your homework I'm, I'm glad you brought that out I didn't even think about that because it just goes to show you how all of the hidden costs about being in business because uh, I used to call things, you know, the cob, the COB, the cost of business. What does it cost mm -hmm. you to put the key into the front door of my manufacturing business, unlock it, walk in and say, I is in business. <laughs> <laughs> there is a cob there. It's a cost of business and all bills must be paid, period. Yep. That's just the bottom line. So the more homework you do, the less headaches and the less sleepless nights that you will experience. And uh, that's that's very critical because all of it's avoidable if you do your homework, right? right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. If you know what's possible and you know the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And as a part of that, uh, we're going to talk about two more things. Okay. The setup sheet has hmm. areas where you can talk about the gross rental income, the effective gross income mm -hmm. after certain... Uh, vacancy loss or other factors. However, um, what I'm noticing that everybody had for these three properties anyway, they just mm -hmm. made up numbers hmm. as an example of gross rental income for the three properties. Each one of the three properties had the same gross rental income of $99,999. <laughs> All three properties had the same. So obviously that's not a real thing. Yeah. Another item is that it says pro forma. And it's very important mm. to understand what pro forma means. And that means we're making up numbers based on what the best scenario would be. Mm. Not actual numbers. Mm. So whenever you see pro forma, you're seeing numbers that the broker is saying, here's what's possible, not yeah. what's happening. Yeah. That's kind of like buying a car from a, a dealer. And he'll say, well, I believe you can get about 30,000 miles before you have to change tires <laughs> or something of this. He's pulling numbers what he thinks reasonable out of the air is what Randy is saying there. So you want to check that out. And uh, the more specific that you are, the more that you are able to narrow down, take out the gray and make it black and white, the better off you'll be. Now, one of the other things that we spoke about last time was the, um, the per door cost. Oh, and that yeah. Is some, and they're, doing something very similar. They just call it price per unit. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed was a very close relationship of all three properties between 195 
and like $205,000 per unit. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that that's relatively high. And then as you look into it, these buildings are relatively new. This mm -hmm. 16 unit building uh, was built in, da, 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 da. I'm looking Let's for where see. I had that information again. I'm looking too, and I don't see when it was built. Uh, Something gave me the impression it was only five years old. Uh, there we go. Uh, no, let's see. Uh, I didn't find that. What I did find is it went, it was listed in September last year. Mm -hmm. And here we are six months later in March, and it, it's still available. Mm -hmm. And you look at the photos and it looks beautiful. It mm -hmm. also said one of these units is being rented as an air B and B. Mm -hmm. So that's, they're getting additional income from that beyond what the normal rent would be if they're able to turn it over frequently. Mm -hmm. So, Oh, here we go. Year built 2018. That's only five years ago mm -hmm. with the Airbnb. There are several issues. One of them is that could make the other three tenants in this building. Again, they're four, four unit buildings. Mm -hmm. The other three tenants could be very unhappy seeing strangers continuing to show up mm -hmm. in the building where they're living long term. Yeah. They don't know who these people are. Do they have children? No children. Are they party animals? Whatever. They have no idea what to expect. So this could make the current tenants very unhappy. Yeah, I can I can see that because, you know, you picture, you know, if you're living in an apartment and ever couple of weeks you see strange people popping in there and you know you don't know them yeah you don't could know be every them. few days yeah could be yeah and it's, so uh, the other thing there is that various cities could have prohibitions against having an airbnb in an apartment mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. and so you know you need to check with the mm -hmm. regulations for that community to see if that's even allowed. Yeah. yeah. Personally, I don't think I'd want an Airbnb in there with, with regular tenants. Because, yeah. It, it uh, does. It, it creates issues. It absolutely. That's what does. I would think. That's what I would think. Right. And, uh, you know, just, uh, I understand right. Airbnb, they can charge a little more money for it or whatever, but you know, exactly. uh, it's, it's not worth it in the long run. It really isn't. It may not be. Mm -hmm. Um, as an example, let's say an apartment rents for $1,500 per month. Again, mm -hmm. these are nice looking places. And mm -hmm. that is probably a reasonable rent. They may mm -hmm. be able to get $3,000 a month renting it for a few days at a time on Airbnb. They could mm -hmm. be doubling the income mm -hmm. off that same unit that they would have otherwise been getting only $1,500 a month. Mm -hmm. and, but here's the other thing. Who's going in and cleaning it? After yeah. someone leaves, yeah. who's providing the keys to them to get into the unit when they don't show up till 11 o'clock or midnight on the first mm -hmm. time they're supposed to be using the apartment? Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, it, it's another story. And there are people who are actually in an Airbnb business and they've got it set up. They got a manager who provides the key or they provide put certain kinds of locks mm -hmm. on the door that all they have to do is give them a code and yep. they can get in just things to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now we're looking at the last of the three properties mm -hmm. that you sent to me. And we're going to talk about that one. Uh, that one is a 10 unit apartment building. It mm -hmm. looks like two units, two mm -hmm. five unit buildings, side by side. This is the 195,000 per unit. These are mm -hmm. one bedroom apartments. And again, gross rental income, you're not going to find out. I talked to this person and he is emailing it to me mm -hmm. uh, along with the non-disclosure agreement. Right. Uh, the cap rate on this property is 6.7%. Again, that's your capital at work. After you put your money in, after you subtract your expenses, that's what you should be getting 
from investing in this property. This one was built in 2017. Mm -hmm. So that's six years old. Again, mm -hmm. very new properties. You wouldn't expect a lot of maintenance to be required on them. The repairs and maintenance should be a very low item on a property mm -hmm. that's this new. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you don't know what the property taxes are. You have to find out from the area. The broker does give it wonderful descriptions. We are pleased to present this property, a mixed use development. Well, what's mixed use mean? Mm -hmm. That means you've got people living in the property and businesses operating on the property. Hmm. So you could have living upstairs and a commercial business downstairs. Wow. It says it's fully stabilized. And it has eight residential units and two commercial suites. Mm. Now, they talk about the opportunities for the future, where you can participate in the development of an adjacent one-acre lot. Mm -hmm. And once that's completed, the development could include an additional 34 residential units and over 7,700 square feet of commercial space. Hmm. Wow. So you're not just living in a residential area, mm -hmm. you're living in a mixed use area. Mm -hmm. And for some people, that's fine. Manhattan's filled with them. San Francisco's filled with them. People love it. They walk out of their apartment right next door to the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. So it's just being aware of mm -hmm. what could be not only where you are now, but mm -hmm. what could be showing up later. Yeah. I'm familiar with that area of town, uh, downtown Bryan. It's pretty, mm -hmm. uh, that'd be a good fit. Whereas in other areas, it may not be a good fit. It may be an eyesore, <laughs> you know, a uh, good example. I, uh, <clears throat> I know of one person that, uh, lived in an apartment. They couldn't live there long because it was within about a hundred feet of a train track. Oh, <laughs> oh, and the the building would shake and the horn would come by at two o'clock in the morning to cross the road. And oh, you can imagine what a nightmare that is. So it's just not where the building is. It's the the atmosphere around it. You know what? Yes. Would you would you live there? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Is this is this where you want to be? Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Because so, you wouldn't be able to represent something that you didn't really believe in yourself. You think about Well, I that. wouldn't be able to. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I wouldn't be able and, to rip. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's so funny, too, because um, my wife is helping uh, this young girl we've taken under our wing who mm -hmm. has a five-year-old daughter. When I say young girl, she's 25. She's yeah. got a five-year-old. So you're not all that young. Mm -hmm. It's a reasonable age to have a five-year-old. Anyway. We're trying to find an apartment for her. Uh, my wife is saying, well, I don't like this. It's near commercial. I don't like this. It's on a busy street. I don't like this because you've got office buildings looking down on it. I don't know. Like, I'm thinking, wait, sweetheart, this is someone who unfortunately in the past had to sleep in her car. Mm -hmm. I really don't think the fact that there are businesses nearby is such a problem for her. At mm -hmm. least it's clean. At least it's a real apartment building. It's yeah. not her car. It has mm -hmm. a bathroom that doesn't have mold in it. It's mm -hmm. in anyway. But my wife has certain standards and it doesn't matter if it's for her or someone else. Mm -hmm. So I understand. Um, yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> here's the things to do when you find something of interest. Mm -hmm. You want to call the broker and you want to ask a lot of questions. If their information is missing, you want to find out if they'll send it to you, which they will. If you provide mm -hmm. them and if you sign a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. And one of the things that I noticed uh, and I can't remember which property it was, but let me go back and see which one uh, I'm not seeing it right now. Oh, well, no, I do remember. It was the one that was listed back in July. Mm -hmm. And here we are in March 
Mm -hmm. and it's still for sale. Yeah. The question you would ask the listing agent is, what's the reason this has been for sale for nine months already? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what's the issue? And, mm -hmm. you know, these are the kinds of questions you want to ask. What, you know, mm -hmm. you want to get the actual expenses. You want to get the actual rents. You want to find out what the actual property taxes are. And you want to find out if it's been for sale for a long time. Why? Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. point is, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Any question you want to ask, ask it. There is oh, no yeah. such thing as a dumb question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. The question you don't ask is the one that's going to bite you. Yeah, absolutely you know, I, right. Another thing, I remember one time in Arizona, I built a place out in, in Arizona, and uh, I was very, very lucky because little did I know they had a volunteer fire department because if they did not have a volunteer fire department, the insurance would not cover it. In fact, I'm retired military. This may shock some people out there. I'm not going to name which one of the uh, well-known that goes by four letters that here for the veterans and they want to insure your house and your car because we have a volunteer fire department here and don't have a fire plug in front of my house. My house was not insurable. <clears throat> so you want to make sure Ask some things about fire departments and things of this nature and make sure that it's up to standard. I mean, this may sound basic or no, I'll tell you I, something right now. I would uh, not have thought of any of this, Jim. Yeah. I'm in Los Angeles. We yeah. have fire departments with yeah. the engines and, and they're paid. Yeah. It, they're all yeah. around us. So I would have never thought about that. Yeah, because uh, I was looking to deal with a package, my home and my house together and all that. And they said, oh, we'll insure your car. I said, what about my house? Well, then, you know, you know how far are you from the fire plug? Fire plug? I live out in the country. We ain't got no fire plugs out here. We got some fire bugs, you know, <laughs> <laughs> lightning bugs. But they would not touch. That, there was no, Their insurance policy would not provide fire insurance for my property. Now, I could probably get liability insurance, but that don't do me any good. My house burns down. Yeah. But I mean, exactly. these are some things you got to do your homework on. And it's also nice to know how far you are from the medical um, emergency and ATM and fire. And, because that might be a, I mean, if, if you talk to a mother that's got children and just say, you know, just two blocks away, the we have the, uh, fire department and EMT personnel there because therefore if something happens to her child, she don't want them to be on the other side of town or five miles away. I mean, it's with, with ladies, it's safety. Yeah. And you are so right because it just happened this weekend mm -hmm. where I was going to get together. She's this, this woman we've taken under our wing is now mm -hmm. working for the L.A. Metro. She's going to be driving a city bus. Um, she's getting her training. And over the weekend, her daughter was complaining. She was wheezing. She was crying. She took her to Children's Hospital, which was only a few miles away from her. Mm -hmm. And they, they're giving her oxygen. She had to stay overnight. She's supposed to be released today from Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about Saturday, Sunday, Monday. She, she had to go to the hospital, this little five-year-old for three days. Mm -hmm. If you're out in the sticks somewhere oh, and you yeah. don't even have an EMT, it or can be serious. Yes. Or if you have one car, if your tenants have one car in the family and the breadwinner has taken that to go to work and the wife has, mama has an emergency with her child, she needs to know, hey, there's where the EMT are. I got their number and all that stuff because uh, safety with a mother is more important. More important it is to a man. I'm not trying to say it's not yeah. important to us men, but safety to a mom and how she can protect her children, that is high up on her list. So that's a, that's a, that's a nice mental note to have, ladies and gentlemen. 
So yeah, and so I, and I can't even spell real estate. <laughs> but but Jim, it it just uh, the incident that just happened this weekend illustrates mm -hmm. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, um, absolutely. And let's see if that. What else did I want to cover? Okay, we spoke about um, the per unit cost. We spoke about the location. We spoke about how it's dressed up. We spoke about how you get more mm -hmm. information on it. You need to reach mm -hmm. out to the broker, which is which I found to be a fun exercise where one person has their voicemail full, the other person says, "Send me an email or a text," mm -hmm. yeah. and the third one actually picked up the phone and spoke to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And also, too, this is they I, I imagine real uh, real estate is on multi-level MLS. Uh, call some other real estate. Say, hey, I'm inquiring about this property here. You know, you don't have to go back to those people. I mean, at least you can get a straight answer. Yeah. You can let it know if it's off, uh, you know, get your uh, questions answered. That's what I do. And, yeah. uh, you know, just just amazing. Yeah. So yeah. The, the one who did pick up the phone, he's emailing to me a non-disclosure mm -hmm. agreement and uh -huh. the expense ratio and the actual rents. And so we can talk about that on our next call. Mm -hmm. And in the next call, we're also going to be talking about other things like maybe small maintenance items you could do yourself. Mm. Things you should hire yeah. a specialist for whether it's an electrician mm -hmm. or a plumber or a roofer or mm -hmm. whomever. Yeah. So, we're going to cover those things in, in subsequent weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out anything else. Well, I provide, I put together a little list and at my age, I can remember next to nothing. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear go you. back and consult the list we put together. Yeah. Well, let's also talk a little bit about wealth on any income that, uh, the banner you have back there and also your, uh, the nonprofit that you have, the, shelter to soldier.org and the course that you do offer uh is complete now i do want you to share that with the folks okay. out there because this sure. is so much information now let me remove myself so you can see the folks i'm gonna take myself out so you folks can see the full banner and the banner for the a non shelter to show soldier i'll be right back thank you jim okay so right over here you can see Shelter to Soldier, there's their little logo. And what they do is they rescue dogs from high kill environments like uh, the pound where these dogs could be euthanized. And if it's the right size, it's the right temperament, it will be trained, it'll be rescued and trained as a service animal for soldiers who've come back at, with post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injuries, other issues, you know, the people who are out on the front lines and come home and are suffering are committing suicide at the rate of almost one an hour, about 20 per day. And not one service member who's received their service dog has committed suicide. So this charity is saving two lives at a time, a dog that would have been euthanized and a soldier that could have committed suicide. So 100% of the profit from my courses, my books, uh, the work that I do teaching other people how to handle money effectively or buy real estate or whatever it is gets donated to this charity as well as other animal and veteran charities. So I've got a UCLA a course based on the UCLA class that I teach. It's five hours long, has all the paperwork, has a sample of the lease agreement. I explain all the important factors in the lease agreement. And it's $127. So the profits from that are donated to charity. And if you're a business owner, it's a deductible expense. If you're not a business owner and you purchase the course and you give a donation to get the course, you've got a charitable donation, which is tax deductible for you. So whichever way you buy it, whether you just buy it directly because you're a business owner or you need to make a, a donation, and you get the course that way, it's deductible in either case. So that's about the charity. That's about the UCLA course and everything you get with it. And like I said, it's $127. So it's very reasonable. Actually, enrolling in the class live uh, cost more money than this recorded version with all the documents. That's it, Jim. That's, an, that's I, I covered it all. 
There you go. We wanted to get that out there to you folks because there's a lot of folks out there that's going to be interested in uh, real estate and things of this nature. And uh, the more information you have from people who are very experienced like Rennie is, and the, at $127, my goodness gracious, uh, that still blows me away because that is a tremendous value. And uh, I don't get any portion of it or anything like that. And I wouldn't want it if he even if he gave it to me. But my point being is that we want to provide so much value to you. You think about the things that we've learned together here on the show and Brenny's uh, expertise and knowledge in the class he puts, and he puts it into a package where 100% 1 1 of the net profits that also goes to help saving two lives. That That's just a win-win-win situation. And that's what we encourage you to do, to get in situations in your life where it's a win for everybody. That's what makes life worth living. And, and next week, we're going to be back with Rennie, and you're going to be talking about, uh, he's going to give me a test if I can spill real estate. I got to stay real hard. <laughs> yeah, I'll help you. Don't worry, Jim. Yeah. R. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Anyway. Well, once in a while, I just realized once in a while, someone will ask me, wait a second. I don't understand. You're in business. How could you possibly give away 100% of your profits? <laughs> and the whole point is because of what we're talking about. I've invested in real estate. I have properties that pay me an income. I have mm -hmm. uh, triple net lease properties with Walgreens that pay me income. I've got oil and gas investments that pay me an income. Uh, I've, you know, I've got stocks that we sell covered call option writing on, which is generating an income. And so I don't have to work for a living. Mm -hmm. So the only reason to be working is if I could do something more than that. And mm -hmm. that's, I'm giving the profits from my work to charity. There you go. There you go. That's that's the best. That's the best job you can get. And there, there's no openings on that job, and you can't get fired. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I ain't firing me. There you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our time is gone. We'll be back next week, same time, same place, same station, with Rennie, and we're going to be continuing on in this series of real estate. And if you ever have any questions, I should have put this up earlier. I apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get in touch with Rennie at uh, wealthonanyincome.com. He's also got uh, renniegabriel.com. And you can also get in touch with us uh, here at the TV station, Inspiration E360 TV. To be able to watch the shows on replay, you can go to our YouTube channel. Uh, let's see. That's um, just put in messages of Inspirational Stories TV show. Or you can go to our website, which is real simple because it'll be uploaded tonight and it's done automatically. It's just put in my TV show dot live and you can be able to play the video, share the video and stop the video to be able to copy down the information and take a look at some of the things that Rennie is talking about there, because you can listen to the show and open up and look at the property and put two and two together and come up with a four square idea. How about that? <laughs> Crystal. And for the next call, I'll actually have slides that can be used. Mm. And so we'll take okay. care of the technology that way. Yeah, we might do a recap on this show with a few slides or whatever. But anyway, we'll be back next Monday. And Rennie, thank you so much. I'm going to give you a chance to say a few, uh, just a few comments there, closing comments, if you would say. Uh, it's what I love to tell mm. people all the time when it comes to growing a business, creating wealth, having mm -hmm. a wonderful relationship with your spouse. Mm -hmm. It's a team sport, not a solo sport. There you go. There you go. Rennie said it best. And we'll be make sure we'll make sure Rennie has a pocket full of quarters next week for we, <laughs> before we kick off the show. But be sure and tune in and share the show with others. Make sure that you love yourself first, then you can love others. And on behalf of Rennie and myself, we sincerely hope and pray that you and your loved ones are enjoying the best life has to offer as far as love, health, and happiness. Bless you. We'll see you next week.